Alright, so here we are. The uh, final video in this beginner gear recommendations uh, little series that we got here. And this last video is going to be what I see to be the ideal equipment and climbing system for, uh, for a working arborist. And since this is for a beginner, uh, I'm not going to be talking about uh, SRT or fixed rope systems at all, since I think that it's really important that when you're beginning that you understand double rope systems really well first, especially since they're kind of, they're a little bit more straightforward, easier to use, easier to understand and diagnose problems with them. So also a little bit more easy to control, a little bit more user friendly. So to start out, we're still going to start out just the same as always with a helmet. Get yourself a good uh, climbing helmet to protect your noggin. Uh, and keep in mind what you're going to be using the helmet for uh, when you get it. If you are required to work around high voltage lines, then make sure you get something that's E-rated, I believe. This helmet is not. You can see there are venting points where there's a wire mesh. So this helmet would not be E-rated. But also, uh, one other thing to consider is whether or not it's uh, a type 1 or a type 2 helmet. Type 1 is impact only from above, type 2 is impact from top and side. And usually to get that type 2, it's going to have a foam insert. This cask super plasma does have a foam uh, insert to absorb impact. I don't remember if this is type 1 or type 2. It's type 1, so it's rated top down, but having that foam m makes that rating I I feel the foam's a little bit better, but it is heavier. So if you go with something like a, uh, a Petzl helmet, their helmets usually don't have any foam inserts, so they're probably some of the lightest helmets that you can go with as a climbing helmet. But yeah, get yourself a helmet. It's always nice to have a visor in case you forget safety glasses for something. You can pop that visor down. But you should always wear safety glasses. And then Moving on to the next thing, I'm still just going to show you the same harness, but I'll actually show you my other harness too. But the reason I'm not recommending the other harness is because you have to build it yourself. But uh, something I think that makes a good uh, harness for a production climber, especially if you're not doing a lot of big removals and you're not going to be in the same harness or in your harness the entire time. It's nice to have a harness that's made to go on and off easily. So, uh, for example, this is the uh, Teufelberger Tree Motion S Lite. So, because it's the light version, it's cheaper and it weighs a little bit less. It does not have any quick attach buckles, so this can be a pretty difficult harness to get into. Whereas, if you buy the nicer one, if you go with the Tree Motion Evo or just the regular tree motion. You're going to have quick detach buckles on your waist and on your leg loop, so it makes the harness way quicker to take on and off. So if you're going between multiple pruning jobs and stuff, even if you're just going to be at one job for the day, it's so much nicer to have a harness that you can just step into and buckle up and not have to fight through all of the adjustable loops and everything. So that's something that I personally look for in a harness is finding one that has all of those quick attach buckles so you can get in and out easily. Now with that, I personally prefer a harness that doesn't have a quick attach buckle around the waist. Uh, so my method of choice for a waist belt is a uh, belt style one with uh, these rivets, things like this because it still goes on really fast, just like you're putting a regular belt on. But just to me personally, from a personal preference point, this feels more secure to me. So this is a harness I did make, and this is the one I use in the winter at work, just because when I have heavier clothes on, it's super hard to get into my tree motion. So I prefer to just be able to put this harness on quickly. Also, it's super cool because I made it myself. But for those reasons, obviously this is not something for a beginner. I'm just using this harness to tell you what I like in a harness. So 
Personally, I feel more secure yet yeah, with this buckle style, but on the leg loops, I do have the quick attach buckles that can be found on the tree motion and all kinds of other harnesses, and they've worked just fine for me. I've never had a problem with them. But something else I have on this harness that I would definitely recommend if you're going to find yourself carrying a large saw in the tree, if you're doing really big removals uh, and have to take something bigger than a climbing saw into the tree, is it's super nice to have suspenders. These are the tree motion suspenders. They do not add any extra like safety rating to the harness. This doesn't mean I can wear this in the bucket truck or as a fall protection harness. It's not life support as you can see by the red marked ring, the red marked Teufelberger ring. But it does hold up your harness a little bit better when you got a saw on there. And also when you have a bunch of bulky clothes on, it does keep those tucked in a little bit more. So I love this for the winter when I'm wearing uh, a lot of extra gear. It just keeps everything tucked away a little bit better. And from getting in the way of me clipping onto my side D's or pulling things on and off my harness. So that's pretty sweet. So yeah, look for something that has uh, different attachments that you like, but they're all, they're all pretty good. Everything's gonna be able to work for you. It's just small nuances. My personal recommendations, like if I were to go out and buy a harness right now, what would be the one that I would go for? I would probably either go for the uh, Tree Motion uh, Evo, the new Tree Motions. I really like their double bridge system. Or another harness that I'm a huge fan of is the New Tribe Onk saddles. I would love to try out one of those harnesses. And one that I just saw that looks pretty cool and I got to look into more because it's pretty, it looks pretty sweet, but I find that they're usually overpriced is the Buckingham, I think it's the Agility Harness. I'll post in the description which one it was, but I just saw it on their website and I was like, that's kind of a sweet harness. But the thing that makes me such a huge fan of uh, tree motions, and the reason I would highly recommend a tree motion, is they have these wonderfully huge lower side Ds to clip your lanyard to. It's just a really big target. So when you're advancing up in the tree, it's super easy to just throw your lanyard around the tree and clip that side D because it's such a nice big attachment point. It's really wonderful and it's way more comfortable than clipping to the upper Ds, these ones that are actually on the waist belt. Just because when you're pruning and stuff and you're putting all your weight into your lanyard, that'll hold you the same as a climbing line if you use the lower Ds. But if you're clipped into the upper ones, it's just going to be like a tight belt pulling around you. So that's not preferable. So that's something that I'm a huge fan of on these harnesses. But yeah, so now that we've got the harness kind of discussed, there's probably a lot more things to be said there. But... The next thing that we're going to step up to is the climbing system. So I think one of the best things you can do is have so many different kinds of rope lengths to make your job easier. It always sucks having too much rope. Granted, you don't want to have too little rope, but I find that it's in most of the trees I work in, the ideal length of rope for me, uh, working in a, in a, double rope system is 75-ish feet, 80 feet. Whereas when I'm doing single rope, I find that 50 feet is usually perfect. That's why I like my 50 foot lines. And But for double rope, I really like this. I think this is only a 75 foot line. But since we are talking about double rope, here's the system. So instead of a Blake's hitch, like in the other system, we have a separate hitch cord which is this yellow 10X tech, and a double attachment point pulley. This just helps you clean up things a lot more because instead of having to connect it back to your harness, you have this external rigging point that makes it a lot easier just to manage everything. So I also have my leather camium saver on here. So you know, you would just throw it over a branch and then clip on to your attachment point. Now, here are my recommendations for making a system like this. You're gonna want 
uh, either a 24 strand or a 16 strand rope. These 24 strands are a little bit thinner. Let me make sure this focuses on me. 24 strands a little bit thinner, but uh, it runs pretty well in hardware. The, uh, I would say the advantage of using a 24 strand is it's lighter usually because it's smaller. But uh, using a 16 strand rope is going to be much grippier. So maybe if you don't like climbing with gloves, if you're doing a lot of removals without using a cambium saver and you need that extra durability, maybe you want to look at a 16 strand just because, yeah, it's easier to hold on to and uh, those bigger ropes are always nicer for beginners. Now, coming up to, so this is a CMI, double attachment point pulley. It just has two attachment points. And um, this is a good, like, cheap option. These are probably about maybe $40. I don't remember how much I paid for this one. But the kind of the industry standard, the thing you see everybody using are the DMM Rapide pulleys. Uh, those have three attachment points and they're just a little bit more high quality. So the thing that I love about the DMM ones that I don't like about my CMI one is you can see there's kind of a space in between these sheaves that your uh, carabiner has to go through. Well, sometimes what I like to do is I like to, instead of just attaching my carabiner to this, I like to tie my rope through here the other end of my rope, especially if I don't have a splice on the other end, I like to just tie my rope off directly to the pulley. Now, when you do that with this CMI pulley, it's got some pretty sharp edges. So I've noticed my rope getting fluffy, a little bit cut up from being tied through this hole. Where with the DMM ones, they're just flat against each other and they're a little bit more well uh, smoothed out, so they're not gonna damage your rope like the CMI does, but if you're just clipping a carabiner to it, the CMI pulley is still just a uh, perfectly fine, great option. Now moving up to hitch cord, usually you're gonna wanna go with something uh, heat resistant, like this Sterling RIT cord. Uh, they're made with nicer aramid fibers and stuff. They're a little bit more expensive, but they will definitely last longer. However, uh, something that pretty much everybody I work with uses is this uh, Samson 10X Tech. That's this uh, yellow stuff and it's usually used for rigging or rigging equipment. It's not meant for like rope on rope friction, but it works just fine. This is coated polyester basically. It's not, it was never made to be a press -it cord, but here's what I think is great about it. It's super fluffy and it grabs really well. So especially when you're first getting into tying split tails and like getting new to tying the Valdonian truss or other things like the nut which I have on here, uh, it's gonna grab really well and pretty reliably. Just, you know, always be inspecting it, make sure it's not wearing out. And when you're buying them, so what I have here is a splice one. Now the difference between using a splice and a, uh, kind of sewn loop or just tying a scaffold knot is that the spliced ropes are going to be thicker than the manufacturer's diameter. That's because to make the splice, uh, part of the rope is black back spliced through the core. So the spliced hitch cord is going to be a little bit wider in diameter than the original hitch cord would be. However, if it's sewn, that's not a problem. And if you just tie scaffold knots yourself, it's not a problem. I would recommend sewn loops or spliced loops just because it's a little bit cleaner. You got less stuff going on down here instead of having two big bulky knots right here. It's really nice to just have that streamlined configuration. But yeah, for a beginner I would definitely recommend this 10X Tech. This is the 10 millimeter stuff just because, yeah, it's really a reliable grabber. I've never had this uh, hitch cord kind of like creep on me or not grab. it is always gonna connect every time. It's just a really grippy hitch cord, so really good for a beginner. And once again, I would still recommend a leather cambium saver for a beginner, just because they're super easy to install, super easy to get out of the tree, and I'm just a big fan of them. And they're definitely better than no cambium saver, you know? It's protecting your rope and protecting the trees you're working in, I guess, unless you're doing removals. But it's still a good idea to 
use a cambium saver. All right, so moving on from that, kind of your second climbing line or your lanyard, uh, this is uh, not what I would consider the ideal lanyard, but it is a separate lanyard. So uh, my biggest, the thing I would change about this the most is first of all, it is super nice to have a spliced eye or a sewn eye on the end of your lanyard just because it makes it way easier to retrieve the lanyard pulling it back through a crotch or something like that. But this rope is a nice 24 strand rope by Samson. It's called Samson Hyperclimb. But the rope I would recommend for lanyard material is Sterling Tri-Tech rope, which is pretty expensive. It's $3 a foot or more sometimes. But it's a super abrasion resistant rope, so it holds up really well to wear. And it also tolerates being hit with like a silky saw or a hand saw really well, not a chainsaw. And if you hit it hard enough with a silky saw, yeah, you'll probably cut all the way through. But if you just like nick it and stuff, it just like holds together super well. And I've noticed it doesn't stiffen up like other Kern Mantle ropes. It stayed really fluffy for me and really nice. Just super nice rope. Hitch cord grabs it really well. I'm just a really big fan of Sterling Tri-Tech. But you know, any other rope just works fine. And uh, here, I would actually kind of recommend this, but it's really expensive and kind of heavy and I would understand why you wouldn't do that. But this is a uh, hitchhiker, which is an SRT device, climbing device. It was not made for a lanyard, so lanyard system. However, because it's an SRT device, if you're say pruning some big, uh, I don't know, big flat tree, something that's really nice about this is since I have a long lanyard, it's a 15 foot lanyard, if you're using that in a doubled configuration like a buck strap, then you know you got about like seven and a half usable feet. However, because you have this SRT device on here, you could just toss the carabiner over a branch and clip it off to itself. And now you have another 15 foot uh, SRT climbing line, which can be really nice to just have a short climbing line to do some positioning, get done what you need to do, and then go back and disconnect it and keep climbing. So that's a pretty cool thing. That This isn't what I use at work. I've just been trying this out. At work I would just have basically the same system I showed you for double rope, except for I wouldn't have some fancy pulley. It'd just be a little hitch tending pulley, just a single pulley. And yeah, that works really well. At work, my lanyard is, yeah, Sterling Tri-Tech, and then I use that same Samson 10X Tech as my prussic cord on my uh, lanyard. Just grabs super, super well. So, that's pretty much all that, you know. Uh, you can look at the uh, budget video if you want to see my discussion on spurs, because I still think that, you know, I always, if you're doing a lot of removals, make sure you spend good money on your spurs to get some nice climbing spurs and try other people's out because they fit everybody differently. So if they're, if you have a lot of people at work that have their own spurs, try out a couple different people's spurs to see what kind of pad style you like the best because it doesn't work out the same for anyone. I don't like the spurs that everybody else uses and nobody else really uses the spurs that I use, but you know, find what works for you. So the last thing I'll talk about is something I don't have here. Once again, it's at my truck at work or the bucket truck I work with, but is a wire core flip line. Now, so this is just a uh, rope flip line. Now, a wire core flip line is useful for two reasons. If you're removing a lot of trees that are straight up and down and they're really big, it's super nice to have a wire core flip line because with that extra form to it, when you're advancing your line, it's way easier to roll it out around the tree and hop the line up. Because if I hold out this lanyard, see that little piece of rope just droops really easily when I double it up. But with a wire core, it'd be pointing straight out. So it's way easier for me to flip that up the tree and keep climbing. Now, the other good thing about a wire core flip line is it is fairly cut resistant 
to a, a chainsaw. So if you just like, say you just like, probably one of the most common things I see as a mistake where people end up cutting their lines at work is if you're working a really big tree and you're uh, chunking down the stem and you're using a big saw, you're not hitting the lanyard full speed. What happens a lot is you'll be holding the saw, you'll go to relax and you'll set the saw on your flip line on accident and the, the because they're bigger saws or clutches wear out, things like that, the, uh, the chain will still be spinning and then it'll nick your line and on a rope lanyard it'll just fly through it, just cut right through, pop you off and you'll fall down. Uh, I saw that happen at work once this year. They didn't fall down, it just cut most of the way through their rope. It was pretty impressive that it was still holding on. But you know, thankfully they were double tied in everything so if it went through that they still would have been on their main climbing line. But yeah, it's exhausting working with big saws and having that extra little piece of safety, having a wire core flip line is super nice. Also, if you're just climbing a lot of straight up and down trees, it's just nice to have that extra little bit of safety knowing that if you have to cut close to your lanyard, that you're just like, eh, if I bump it, it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal. I'll probably be all right. So that being said, you know, you have a bunch of different diameters of flip line. Obviously, the thicker you go, the more resistant it's going to be to being cut by a chainsaw. I use a 5 ace one, which is pretty big. It's a, it's a pretty big lanyard, but, uh, and super heavy, but I really like it a lot, especially if I'm removing a spruce tree or even like a big straight up poplar cottonwood tree really like having that extra safety of a wire core lanyard and I would highly recommend it if you're gonna find yourself climbing a lot of trees like that. But yeah, that being said, let's go out for a little climb and we'll show you some of the benefits of uh, having a more dedicated double rope system like this as opposed to the Blake's hitch system that I was using in the budget video. Yeah, let's do it. So we are back at that same tree that I did in the budget video but now we're probably gonna climb all the way to the most workable top of this tree because it's gonna go a lot faster with this system because it's the ideal system it works very well I'm still gonna just uh, throw up in that same branch I started with last time and then I'll climb all the way to the top because that's how I like to do it I could try finagling a branch way there at the top I'm just going to go with that one and climb up because at work what we would do instead of uh, throwing up into that branch at all is we'd probably just lean a ladder up against this tree and then just climb up and then spider climb all the way to the top just flipping lanyards until we get to the top and then rappel to wherever we want to work. But yeah, let's do it. I'll uh, get back to you once I have my line up in the tree because we did that in the budget video so I'm not going to go over it again because it's probably going to look exactly the same. I'll show you from setting this up is how I install the cambium saver because that did go incorrectly in my other video. So it's tempting to tie just a knot through your splice but just for the longevity of the splice and safety I would recommend not doing that. Just girth hitch it the way you would any other rope without a splice. So the awesome thing about this is I have a sewn end on the other end. I never climb off of this sewn end, but it kind of acts as a low profile termination. So with this rope, I don't ever tie a knot in the bottom to keep me from falling off because that sewn termination would get blocked up in there. At least I would hope. So I'm gonna pay out some rope to go up the tree. So, that leather cambium saver will probably make it to the crotch, but it'll get stuck when it gets there. So you know it's just paying out. So what I'll do is right about here, I'll place good, that trucker's hitch is the wrong way. You want to make it so that the retrieval end of the trucker's hitch is the bottom end going to your hitch climber system. So I'll keep pulling this up, paying out some slack. Now 
Now I wait to put the trucker's itch in until my rope's gone over the limb because I don't want to try to be pulling that uh, uh, cambium saver over with the throw line because my fingers would die. So I prefer to do it so that the rope will reach me so I can pull on the rope instead of the throw line to set the cambium saver. <gasps> Come on, go over. There we go. Then just pull this in and that trucker's hitches out. Now it just moves freely. Beautiful. So I'll just take this off. And to make this easier, you could use a foot ascender. But when I'm doing doubled rope, I never use a, well, pretty rarely use a foot ascender. I pretty much either just do that foot locking technique that I did yesterday, or I just brute force pull myself up. So once again, sticky gloves are gonna be really awesome for this. All right, so in this video, oh man, got something on my back. Uh, I'm not going to do a breakdown or anything of uh, how to tie these friction hitches just because one, I don't think I'm particularly good at it and also there's just so much to learn. You have so many different options when you use a split tail. So many awesome cool things that are out there. So I'm just, I just got this. You gotta, there's so much research to do into all the awesome different things you can do with these. This is a nut, I think, K-N-U-T, but the Valdonian tress is definitely the most common. That's what pretty much everyone at work uses. That's what I use on my lanyard. But uh, yeah, let's get up there. So with this system, the most common brute force way to do it is to just pull a bunch of slack out and then with your other hand, just ten that slack so it looks a little bit sloppy but it works pretty well if you have a uh, someone on the ground that's ideal because they can pull out the slack for you so you can just keep flying up like this you know don't get too big of a loop because it'd be an exciting fall you don't want to do that yeah sticky gloves Really awesome for doing this. And once again, you can still use this method for to make sure my boots are clean before I do that. They're pretty messy, so I'm not going to do the foot locking thing, but can use the same technique and the awesome thing is with this system it'll kind of immediately tend when you're doing that so that's the nice thing about this is because if I pull like this it just automatically tends it's just very low sit back as long as your splice doesn't contact the knot and force it to close or open you know instead of grabbing the other super nice thing about this system, especially when you're getting more involved in your climbing and you're just really getting into it, uh, the nice thing about this and the nice thing about using a system similar to this with a lanyard is that you can tend slack with only one hand. See, I can hold on with my other hand and easily tend up that slack with the pulley. So that is super nice. Now. We also have our very nice dedicated pulley system that is going to make life much easier when we're flipping over to other branches. We have plenty of length so we can descend a lot with this system and I'm going to be using my lower D's because then you distribute the weight on your legs too, not just your back. The uh, these D's back here are good for spar work. Uh, keeps you a little bit more balanced, keeps the attachment point higher on your center of gravity, but when you're pruning and stuff, it's just so much more comfortable to have your lanyard on your lower D's. It's just really nice. So 
And now when it comes to advancing, I don't have to untie anything. I just pop that carabiner out of the hole and I'm off that branch. And I just throw it over a branch and clip it in to progress to another branch. It's just super simple and easy. But yeah, the nice thing about this hitchhiker is even with a ton of weight on the rope, it takes like no effort to release that knot. Super nice, really soft release, really very perfect. But it doesn't tend slack as well. It's pretty decent, but not quite as frictionless as if you use a pulley. Oh. You know, I always stay tied in. The most common reason for a climber to fall out of a tree is from failing to reattach themselves to their climbing system. So stay alive, stay safe. Always, always, always be attached. So now, just gonna advance my double rope. Sometimes if you need better balance, you can move this system down onto your side D's too for when you're just using it as a lanyard. I'll do that when I'm doing spar work. I got my scare strap up here and then I'll have my climbing line down on these straps for these lower D's, but I'm usually just fine keeping it on my uh, climbing ring. But yeah, let's keep going. Favorite way to climb a tree is to kind of free climb it like this, like just keep advancing your lanyards and spider climb. But you know, it's definitely easy on your body if you uh, shoot a line really high up first and climb SRT or some adapted form of double rope SRT to the top because it's definitely more wear and tear on your body to free climb up the tree. More likely to get scratches, bruises, blah, 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 whatever. But for me, this is the most fun way to do tree work. So I definitely prefer to free climb the tree. Huh. And definitely when you're getting squirrelier, making bigger moves when you're ascending in the tree. It's not a bad idea to have both your climbing systems locked off in case you fell or something, just so you have a little bit more of a backup. You know, because I'd rather be a little bit slower than hitting the ground. That's never ideal. Make sure you're always attached before you advance your tie-in, you know? Be safe. Be safe. And beautiful. So, unless I had to go really far out on these tips, I was mainly just doing dead wood below me. I would probably pick a really thick, reliable spot to be tied into, like maybe this crotch is pretty nice and clean. That'd be a good one to work this side of the tree. But this is all really tangled over here, so unless I'm working a lot of that side, I would, I'd probably go high up there. But I'd probably go here on this one if I was going to work this side. But yeah, because how tangled it is, you're going to find yourself needing to go back up so that you can change over and work the other side. So just set up in the most ideal spot to do the most amount of work you can do and then reset when you need to. So this will be interesting. I think my, my rope will likely not reach the ground from here, so I'll have to reset at a different spot, you know. If you think your rope's too short, just always... Remember to tie a knot in there. So, 
that you don't back off the end of your rope. But this was a much more fun tree than I thought it was going to be in. Pretty, pretty nice view here. Not as tall as the pines, but but this is pretty sweet. Got a pretty funny aspen or some kind of popple growing up right next to this white pine like it's hiding in there. It's kind of fun. Oh, so this was a maple. I thought it was probably like a sugar maple or something. That's probably what it is. Nice little beautiful sugar maple out here. It's definitely not a red maple. It's definitely not a silver maple. Probably not. Sugar maples just grow nice and straight like this when they're in the woods. Sometimes they get squirrely in backyards, but but yeah, none of the other maple trees are this smart when they're growing. They make all kinds of mistakes, but sugar maples, that's a good tree. If you're looking for a tree to put in your yard that's going to be pretty low maintenance and beautiful, I would highly recommend the sugar maple. Really great trees. Big fan. Or like red oak. I like red oak. Climbing oak's pretty fun, but then you gotta prune it in the winter. Yeah, beautiful out here. Nice tree. One uh, last note I'll make is when you're placing your cambium saver, uh, place it uh, with retrieval in mind because uh, say this crotch is pretty good it doesn't get like obscenely tight down here this leather cambium saver is going to be able to pull out of that groove pretty easily but if I were to say put it I don't know the sugar maple's grown pretty well there's not a whole lot of super bad unions like this one's a little bit tighter but still I don't think I'd have I mean this is kind of small I wouldn't want to put all my weight off this but uh it's pretty tight, but I don't think I'd have too much trouble pulling it out of there. You just want to avoid like really tight crossing spots like that. Maybe up there that one would be too tight. But, you know, keep that in mind. Make it as easy as possible for you to get your stuff down without, but also, you know, without compromising your workability too much. Also, putting it in a tighter crotch will wear out your rope quicker if you're not using a cambium saver on removals or something. Oh, maybe like this. Like this would be bad. If you put your cambium saver on that, that might be pretty hard to retrieve. You could go around this and that'd be pretty nice. But going through this included bark area, that's a that's a tight, tight fit right there. So avoid that and make it easy to retrieve. So since I came up on this side, actually maybe, yeah, maybe I'll go with that. Or one of those to come down. But yeah, you know, always be inspecting what you're climbing when you're going up. That's what I like about uh, spider climbing too, is it's really easy for me to inspect the tree when I'm ascending. I can keep an eye on everything, make sure there's not some huge ugly canker or nasty split at a seam somewhere that would make it possibly hazardous for me to put my weight on some part of the tree. But this sugar maple is pretty good. Be a pretty nice tree. Oh, you can see a spot where it'd be really bad to put a cambium saver right here. This straighter portion that comes up over here. That's a pretty tight union. That'd be rough. But, you know, just make good choices. Be safe. Make sure that you get home every day. But, oh, it's, it's an incredible job to have. I love my work views usually you get some pretty good views especially if you're working up on the hill yeah. all right i had to go a little bit higher because this tree is so awesome and i just wanted to see what a beautiful view there would be up here i'm like level with the road but oh yeah it's a nice top up here something i would recommend to say Say you're pruning, you had to come up here to prune these tops to uh, improve uh, maybe stem dominance. Say I want to make sure that these are the tops that continue to be the tallest. 
and I wanted to reduce these a little bit to promote a strong central leader. Uh, probably the best thing you could do if you're double roping is to carry some accessory cord with you so that you could sling one, two, three tops. I mean, if you've worked in these trees for a long time and you've decided that that's strong enough, that'll be able to hold me, go for it. But when you're getting into it, you know, don't take chances like that. Put a, maybe bring a couple slings. I got wood in my mouth. Bring a couple slings, sling these three bigger parts to the top, bring it all down to one carabiner and then clip your double rope through that. You'll have to come back up to retrieve those slings, but at least then you know you have a safe bomber anchor when you're hopping out to work on these tips and take off some smaller stuff. But, uh, cause you can definitely climb up into the bitter ends of these trees, like into some pretty small stuff. Granted, I probably would try not to stand all the way up here where I'd be like as tall as the tree. Cause you know, it might start bending, being a bit noodly. <laughs> Even this is a little noodly, but be safe, you know, create some triple anchor off all three of these so that if one breaks, you're still all right. If you have all three of them slung, they're not going to break from your weight, probably. If you're rigging off of them, that might be a different story. They could probably still hold a lot though, but yeah, if you sling three of these, that's going to be plenty strong. You'll be able to rely on that, but yeah. Be safe, have fun, and do some sick climbs. Oh, this is pretty tall. This is probably close to 60 feet. I can't see how much rope I still have on the ground. Doesn't look like a lot though. This is definitely a 60 foot tree. Maybe, maybe 70 feet at the top. Pretty unlikely, probably like 65 feet. Well, sweet. I'm used to climbing really small maples all the way up to the top. Usually on the big ones we don't have to come all the way up here. But this is pretty sweet because I'm used to playing in these little things and looking down and you're only like 20 feet off the ground but it's a, it's a tall tree. Oh, gotta love this job. So much fun. So wonderful. What a beautiful day too. Like no wind. Oh. Mm very happy to spend this time up here with you guys. Appreciate ya. Hope you enjoy these beautiful views too. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take a picture with my phone so you can actually kind of see that this is <laughs> as nice as it is. All right. Ooh, something I would highly recommend if people are going to be calling you and you'll be on the phone in the tree sometimes is see how hard that was for me to get that out of my pocket uh... well here I'll take a picture real quick but if you're going to be in and out of your phone when you're in the tree this is an old magazine pouch for like M16 magazines or uh, M4 magazines whatever they uh... That fits my phone like perfectly. That was super cheap at like an army surplus store or something. But great, great pouch for holding on to your phone in a quick accessible spot. But yeah, now, now I'll go to the ground. Not going any higher now. <laughs> so just because I can see that it's going to be a pretty straight line to the ground here for my first setup to repel, I'm going to use these branches that I pointed out before. Not this one that's too tight of a union over there. So I'll go off this one, mainly just because my rope's already going down that way. It's a pretty straight path and I don't want to get my uh, rope stuck on anything when I retrieve. Like if I had gone through there to go down, I could probably still use the same spot I'm using for a while, but I'm going to go with this fella right here. And what I'm thinking is that it's going to be slightly easier to pull from this side. So keeping that in mind, that's where I'm gonna put my cambium saver. When I set it up, I'm gonna go through here so that when I pull it to remove it, it's coming through there. Cause that's gonna be a little bit more in line and easy. Since I'm pulling, gonna be pulling from that way. I want it to pull through this way instead of being wrapped around and adding more friction going that other way. 
one thing that is super nice about having a foot ascender when you're doing double rope is when you're in a situation like this, you could just use your foot to kick out all this slack really quick. But yeah, I would highly recommend getting a, for your lanyard at least, getting a spliced or sewn termination for your uh, carabiner because it makes it so much easier to retrieve when you're pulling it back through a union. Beautiful. And so something like this branch that my right foot was just on would probably be something that'd be super easy to retrieve from. So this would be a good choice to set yourself up on for rappel. But I'm gonna set myself on this branch just cause I have a pretty short uh, rope. So that's gonna be a good spot for me to reset. If you're ever wondering, cause if you're doing single rope, if you see that your rope's touching the ground, then your rope's gonna get you to the ground cause it's not a dynamic system like this. But if you're ever worried, wondering if your double rope's gonna reach the ground or not, what you can do is pull it up and you wanna make sure that this goes as far down as it can so that your measurement's accurate. And then hold on to the end up to your other termination point. And so that rope would get me till I was about like nine feet off the ground or something. Actually, it might get me close enough. Who knows, I got time. We'll give it a go. We'll see if this is enough to get me all the way to the ground. I might have to climb back up here, but that's okay. I got other ascent systems to get back up here. Because something else is your estimate's not gonna be exactly correct. If it's touching the ground, you're definitely gonna make it to the ground. But if it's not touching the ground, you might still make it to the ground. Because even though these ropes don't stretch a lot, they do stretch enough. So see, oh look at that. Right up into the end, I'm like right over the ground. So it'd be a little bit hard for me to get off uh, my system, but we might be able to figure something out. But see, that'll black up. That's not, that's not going through that pulley. So that's why these are super nice to have as a termination because they don't get caught like knots would uh, get caught in a pulley or whatever. So I'll just come over here and stand up on this branch over here to get off my system. This is how stuff goes when you enjoy using short ropes like I do. You end up getting so close to the ground sometimes, but not quite. But remember, that's why backup knots are really important. Because you want to be safe. <laughs> so I'll just lanyard myself off here. I'm going to go this way. Because then I can throw the rope through to get the crotch to get it back. Actually, if I block it off like this, that might be better. <coughs> Excuse me. See, using the benefits of this being an SRT tool. And remember, you might get excited. Just want to send this up to the top so you can get down. But you got to remember that you're going to need a knot in there to get your leather cambium saver back. Make it as small as possible so that it doesn't get stuck on other twigs and stuff up there. But now, just going to tie this through here to make it retrievable. If I can, might need another.
spare carabiner. No, that's got too much stuff going on. We'll just overhand this. Clip it to this carabiner so I can retrieve it. I didn't put it through that crotch because that carabiner was not going to make it back through the crotch. And it's a uh, um, captive eye carabiner, so I can't just pop it off if I need to. So now I can just, I, I could have just reached that. Oh well. But important thing is I got it back. All right, so let's pull that cambium saver down and hope it retrieves like I want it to. Try to keep it out of the poop. Let's see if it comes out. Oh, and like butter. That pulled out just the way we needed it to. Now this thing will get stuck on little branches really easily, so you just gotta be aware of that. Get it to keep pulling down. But yeah, the only downside of this is now to easily get this thing, because I don't want to untie all of this, but now I need my hitch climber system to be at the complete opposite end of the rope. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just, uh, probably the easiest thing to do is if you have a sling lying around, which I have one that I use for rigging, um, rigging small stuff, but also I would highly recommend for rigging that you get at least two of these slings, two double or two shoulder length, double shoulder length slings and put them on your harness with two locking carabiners because uh, it's really great to rig off of but if you just hook that up then you can just grab the tending end of your rope and just pull it all through beautiful that makes it go a lot faster super quick and easy like that there we go it's all put away together now i can just bundle this all back up and put it away so that was my ideal setup for a beginner uh climbing arborist or tree worker and I hope that that video was useful for anyone looking for new gear. Please uh, let me know if you have any uh, questions about any of the specific gear or the techniques. But uh, yeah, this is a fun video. This is a fun little sugar maple to climb. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.